everyone and welcome to the Fieldhouse with Culpeper County Parks and Recreation's Recreation Rundown. My name is Jonathan Krawchuk, Station Manager here at Culpeper Media Network, and it is my pleasure to bring you in to our brand new Fieldhouse. However, not necessarily brand new, but it is the first episode that we are able to film in this beautiful facility. Joining me, as always, is the lovely, talented, and extremely excited, Ms. Tabitha <laughs> Riley. Uh, Tabitha, first off, it is great to see you. Same. It's great to see you, too. Uh, you know, there's a special glow about you. Well, uh, there are some really bright lights. There, there are. We, well, sorry, we have to have those. But, you know, Tabitha, for years, you and I have been talking, and I think you have been talking with anybody who would listen, regarding the fact that you were really, really pressing and hoping for a facility, a building dedicated to parks and recreation. I finally got my own building. <laughs> <laughs> the department has our own building. It's so nice to have a facility for our department where we can serve the community and just provide a multitude of activities and events and facility space, place for the kids to come hang out. And in fact, you know, there's kids playing basketball right mm -hmm. now, uh, kids in here earlier. Uh, we purposely scheduled the shoot so that we were kind of in the window of activities, so we, mm -hmm. weren't, we weren't bothering too many individuals. But you know, you've been in here for three months. We mm -hmm. had the opportunity to take a tour a little while back, uh, but just, you know, you briefly mentioned it before, talk us through what is, basically what's best over these three months. We've got a building. <laughs> <laughs> what could be better than that? So, no, it's been awesome. We're open Monday through Saturday from 8 a.m. to 9 p.m., mm -hmm. Sunday from 10 to 6. Okay. So there's plenty of hours um, for everybody to stop in. Um, the schedule is blocked off so that it's different activities at different times. But it's just seeing the kids in the community and the adults come in. Mm -hmm. And we're getting all ages from... 18-month-olds with our preschool playtime and our tumbling classes, adults for our basketball and volleyball, senior citizens for our quilting classes, pickleball, some for basketball. It's, we're hitting the whole community. You know, you really are, and I'll bring this up. I'm kind of jumping the gun a little bit from the schedule that we have or the mm -hmm. outline that we have. One of the things I've noticed um, and people are responding to on your Facebook page mm -hmm. as well as the website are the complete listing of offerings for the field house. Mm -hmm. And I think you post those, uh, I've seen them maybe bi-monthly, I guess, or monthly. So we've got a monthly schedule for the gymnasium. Okay. Um, it is, the March schedule is gonna be the same as what it was in February. And maybe TV Magic will have that schedule up on the screen. Um, and, but, so we've got Preschool playtime from 9 to 12 on Wednesdays and Fridays, mm -hmm. open to anyone ages 6 and under. Um, I absolutely have a teetotal blast <laughs> setting that up. I'm like, okay, I want to play with this, and I want to play with this. We're going to put the Legos over here, and we're going to put the mats over there. So, yes, I have a blast setting that one up. Um, yes, I'm a big kid. Sorry. Oh, no, no, I would totally, <laughs> I would totally set it all up and then play about mm -hmm. an hour before everyone got there. Exactly. <laughs> uh, we've got volleyball on different days. We've got a whole schedule just for the homeschooling community mm -hmm. so they can bring their kids in and let them play during a designated time frame. Granted, they're welcome to come at any time, but we do have a designated time for the homeschoolers. Um, so it's just... It, yeah, it really is amazing. And as we talked about in the past, before, all these offerings were at different locations. Like Correct. we went to location A for quilting, mm -hmm. B for toddler stuff, uh, another location, and here it is all in one place. Oh, it's so nice. <laughs> we need to pop in and check on our quilting instructor. We walk across the hallway. It is nice. We need to check on our volleyball program. We walk across this hallway. <laughs> and everything is right here. One of our instructors needs assistance. Um, they forgot their stuff and have to run out to the car. Mm -hmm. We've got staff right here in case any of the participants have questions. And um, it's just everything is consolidated. We're at a centralized location. If someone needs to find us, they have mm -hmm. questions. We're here from 8 a.m. to 9 p.m. Monday through Saturday and yep. 10 to 6 on Sunday. They're going to get some, unless they call it like midnight, which granted there's the night owls out there. Not true. But they call, they're going to get somebody and be able to have their questions answered. 
Well, I, I want to back up just a little bit. Um, you know, when folks are looking for the offerings, the schedule for the, for the mm -hmm. gym itself, um, again, we want to remind them that there are uh, basic places to reach out to get mm -hmm. additional information. We know that your phone number is 727-3412. Facebook, a lot of people are engaging mm -hmm. with you there. Uh, just go to Facebook and forward slash Culpeper Recreation. Mm -hmm. um, and then CulpeperRecreation.com again has access to all of these listings. Correct. Uh, so folks can check that out and decide what is best for them mm -hmm. to be better, you know, to be, you know, as we say, often and see behind us mm -hmm. live here play here exactly now one of the things that we have talked about uh, before is the access you know you're talking mm -hmm. about the the great hours um, and the investment these opportunities for mm -hmm. our community and some might not feel I don't we, we don't want anybody to feel left out we Correct. want everybody Correct. to have access to this facility and the mm -hmm. offerings in it so what is Parks and Recreation doing to make sure that everybody has access to all that you offer? So for this facility, the membership fees and the daily drop-in rates are bare bones. Mm -hmm. We've made them as affordable as possible. So county resident, county or town resident, because our town residents do live within Culpeper County, so they count as a county resident, mm -hmm. um, $5 a day. I'm sorry, what? $5 a day Jeez. for anything in the gym. Um, and then some of our selected open, non-instructed programs in our uh, aerobic studio or classrooms. Um, Non-county residents are $8 a day. Or they can get a membership. I, I don't have these numbers memorized yet, so I had to bring a cheat sheet. It's amazing you brought that without even knowing I was going to ask. Oh, I know. You are prepared. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm just special. So um, an adult... So we have a one-month option, a six-month option, and a 12-month option. Okay. So one-month option will just automatically renew. You save money if you buy the six- or 12-month option. Six- and 12-month options can be paid up front, or they can be broken into six- or 12-month payments. Okay. Just to make whatever's easier for your checkbook. So for a county resident adult, it's $25 for one month, 98 for six, or 189 for 12. Again. Okay well, one month payment or break it up into six or 12 month payments. For a youth, it's $15 a month. They come three times in a month, they've been paid for their membership. Hmm. So it behooves most people, because most people are coming more than three times a month to play basketball, to play pickleball, to do the preschool um, playtime. We've got that for a membership as well, because um, that's offered twice a week. And then also our open tumbling for preschoolers is offered twice a week. Okay. So there's four options to get your little one, your preschooler out to socialize and interact and play, you to have a little adult conversation. So why not get a membership? You don't have to worry about bringing your cash or your card every time you come. You just scan little card or if you forget your membership card, mm -hmm. we can look you up. So it's, but as far as access for all, $15 for some people may still be a little too much. Yeah, as we all know, things things can get things are getting a little bit difficult right Correct. now. Correct. So we also have our access assistance program, which we just started. Um, that is a scholarship financial aid program where a family can apply for it or an individual. Mm -hmm. It's based on federal SNAP guidelines. And depending on when it is, so beginning of the fiscal year, which is in July, they can get up to $50 per person in their family. And right now, since we're halfway through, we are prorating, so it's half of that, so up okay. to $25 a person in your family. And then that'll be put on your account, and you can use it for any program, few exceptions. Um, our fundraiser programs don't count in our charter bus trips. But we just had a family who qualified. It was a family of five or six, they thinks they got $150 for the family. So whatever that math is off the top of your head. <laughs> they, so you can't ask me to do that. <laughs> I, it just doesn't and work. that family used to buy a six month family membership. She had an additional $46 to pay. She's breaking that up over six month payments. So mm -hmm. she's having to pay under $8 a month for the next six months for a family membership. And this is what I love, you know, and it's, it's, it is really accessibility for everyone. Right. Um, and when you invest in the community, 
you not only invest in material or you know foundation of what mm -hmm. we have here, but also in the people in the community as well. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what we're doing. Exactly. So as folks continue to come in and use this beautiful facility, it has to bring a smile every single oh, time. Oh, absolutely. I mean, really, you hear I the like door hearing chime. that door, doorbell. It's like, yes, somebody else. <laughs> <laughs> and I mean, the response has been, from what I've seen, overwhelming. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, would you agree with that? Absolutely. Some nights or some days, that gym is just packed. Yeah. So um, we've had 30 plus preschoolers in there. Jeez. We've had up to 40 to 50 adults playing basketball. The pickleball courts are normally full on Saturday nights. <laughs> um, it's just, it's hopping. You have a really good, you have a really, really good recipe here for uh, investing in the community, you know, access to as many persons as mm -hmm. possible with as many opportunities mm -hmm. as possible. We've talked about it for years, mm -hmm. and here it is coming to fruition right, well, right under our feet. Right. <laughs> so, and as far as the access, so we also have a second scholarship program. Oh, really? Yeah, we rolled out two. So one is the access assistance program, which is for department activities. Mm -hmm. So they want to do memberships, they want to take an art class, anything like that. It helps cover those fees. The second one is to help cover the registration fees for the youth sports. So all the youth sports leagues in Culpeper County are independent organizations. We don't operate mm -hmm. them. They use our facilities. Um, so a family can apply for their kids to participate in a youth sports. Same criteria, federal SNAP guidelines. And then if they qualify, we will cover their registration fee and get that child registered for whichever sport they choose. Now with these two, with these two programs, I'm assuming that if folks are interested in learning more, they can call you, of course. Mm -hmm. um, are these forms available on the website and yes. on Facebook as well? Right on our main page, so CulpeperRecreation.com. Um, scroll about halfway down, there's information about it. The forms are at the bottom of the page for download. We do have to see a federal tax form, the 1040 or 1040EZ, to verify household size and income level, and the Virginia State 760 to verify that you are a Culpeper County resident. Um, and I don't even need to keep the forms. I just need to see them. Yeah. I don't want to keep any of that information. I'm giving it back. Uh, so um, I just need the one form they fill out, see those two forms. Once I do that, it takes me just a little bit to actually get the paperwork processed. If they're doing an access assistance program, we take and put the funds on their account for them to use and register for whichever they want. Yeah. Reg uh, memberships or programs. If they're doing the youth sports financial aid, then we take and um, put the kids on a list and send it to the sports league. They contact the parents and finalize their paperwork. And then at the end of the registration period, we pay the sports leagues for the children that participated. I love that you are kind of acting as a portal to recreation in the entire county, mm -hmm. regardless of where it where it mm -hmm. comes from or goes to and i feel that's the best way right for we're trying to be a community resource and then one more thing wait there's more well as far as both of those programs go we had to start somewhere mm -hmm. so we're using federal snap guidelines as the qualifier some people may not qualify for snap but still need assistance mm -hmm. So what we're asking those individuals and families to do is to write us a letter explaining why you still need assistance. We're going to take that to our Culpeper County Parks and Recreation Advisory Committee, and then they will make a determination on whether um, they feel that we need to give those people um, assistance or not. So just because you don't qualify, if you're close or you need assistance for some other reason, don't just automatically assume, well, it's based on this, I don't qualify. Yeah. Reach out to us, talk to us, let us know. Our department employees do not make the decision. It's a volunteer board of advisory committee people that they make the decision. So regardless of where you at, you want to give everyone access to this facility. It's I mean, access. really, this is an investment in the Cold Pepper community, yeah. and it's not just for some, it is for all. Correct. And the only stipulation is you do have to be a Culpeper County resident, county or town. Town residents pay county taxes. So, Understood. but yes. Well, that is that is one hurdle that's very easy to jump. Correct. Okay. So, yeah, it's just, 
and this is something I've been wanting for years since I started here so and it's nice to finally have had the support and the funds to be able to do this and because again fifteen dollars doesn't seem like much but mm -hmm. for some families that's the difference between having dinner or not yeah so and you know uh, sometimes when it comes to it you have to cut corners mm -hmm. and you have to decide which ones to cut right and you know we're just trying and work. recreation is a pivotal part of kids developing their social skills adults seniors mm -hmm. they need to get out and be social and active and everything so mm -hmm. it's a pivotal part of everybody's quality of life you know i'm not gonna lie uh this has got to make you feel uh, to be honest with you it, it has to make you feel pretty proud this is the warm and fuzzies that i really enjoy about the job yeah so well, do me a favor, hang on to those feelings okay. because we still have more. Okay. I'm going to talk with your boss real quick. Okay. But I do want to hear about some of the upcoming events. And oh, absolutely. We've got a lot a going on. So. Yeah, you always do. Mm -hmm. So you're planning right now probably for 2025? Actually. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it. I knew it. All right, Tabitha, hang out. We'll be right back. Okay. And folks, you hang out as well because we're going to join Andrew Hardy and then Tabitha will come back to tell us more on this Recreation Rundown. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we welcome to our makeshift studio here at the Culver County Fieldhouse, Director, Mr. Andrew Hardy. Andrew, good to see you, sir. Good to see you too, Johnny Kay. All right, so um, one of the things I love, I mean, we were just talking with uh, Tabitha moments ago, and here we are bringing you in, always great to see, and more and more people are coming in today. Mm -hmm. You have got to be over the moon yeah. with how successful the field house has been in the short three months it's been in operation. I just want to know why I didn't get the kind intro that she got talking about how she was a ray of sunshine and beautiful and talented and all this other stuff, man. I get a, hey, it's good to see you. I'm over the moon excited. But I shook your hand. Did you shake her hand? I would hug her, but I couldn't. Uh, but no, it's, <laughs> it's honestly, Johnny K, it's really exciting. You know, we officially opened on December the 3rd, mm -hmm. I think was when we did the ribbon cutting. And we pulled the numbers together, and just last month we had over 3,100 visitors. And by visitors, I'm not talking about people that have come in the door. It's folks that have walked into that gymnasium and experienced basketball, futsal, volleyball, coming and done arts and crafts programs mm -hmm. and tumbling classes with us. And it's really exciting to see the community responding the way they are. And if you hear all the chatter in the background, it's because we've just opened up for youth basketball from two o'clock to five o'clock today. So they're gonna start it. streaming in. So it's exciting. I love it, I love it. Now, you know, one of the things, you know, you and I are on the same page right now because it is budget time for mm -hmm. the county. It is. Um, and for the past couple of years, this field house, the offerings within it, and the staff that you have to support it have been on that budget. Right. And here we are, you know, it's, folks don't know this because they don't fill out the paperwork, but on the top letterhead of the budget, it says building a better community. Mm -hmm. And when Tabitha and I were talking, and I think you'll probably agree, this really has been almost a cornerstone of building that better community because we are investing in the community. Correct. Uh, you really have to be, I mean, would, would you agree with that? I, I think parks and recreation is the ultimate investment in your community, primarily because it's people's tax dollars at work mm -hmm. that we're also for anyone, whether you're preschool, you're a teen, you're a youth, adolescent, adult, senior, married, single. We offer services, parks, facilities, programming that improve the quality of life. Mm -hmm. I mean, come here on a Wednesday night when we're doing adult basketball. Just last Wednesday, we had 60 plus adults in there playing basketball. And the only thing that one can say is, that is your community celebrating, enjoying one another and competing together. Mm -hmm. And that is such a joy that Wednesday is probably one of my favorite days here. And I'll kind of sidetrack a little bit talking about the building communities because Wednesday we start out the morning with preschool playtime. Yeah. And there's 50 to 60 moms, dads, caregivers with kids that are everything from a handful of months old up to five years old and there's 50 or so in there running simultaneously on Wednesdays we have our quilting programming going off in the classrooms here in the back so young ladies young men that are 50 60 70 years old doing quilting mm. and then that rotates to Wednesday night with basketball that Wednesdays alone you see the entire population of Culpeper from preschool 
to active adult coming out here and enjoying the facility. And it's really about, you know, it's, you know, providing options for opportunity and, mm -hmm. and you're just, you know, Tabitha and yourself are talking about all these options, mm -hmm. all these opportunities for the Culpeper community. And then when Tabitha and I were talking not just moments ago about making sure that everybody has access to these. Correct. Right. Uh, I mean, really, uh, you guys, I mentioned to her, you have to be proud of what has happened here. No, and it really is amazing because Tabitha is really the great one to talk to because she's been here 18, 19 years, however yeah. long it's been. She's our longest tenured employee. And she sees the transition of Parks and Rec from where we were to where we are now and honestly where we're going into the future because that is where Parks and Rec's at right now is a crossroad, I'll say. Mm -hmm. We have the facilities, we've got the staff, we've got the team in place. I think we've got a great reputation throughout the community right now that they trust our department to offer top flight facilities, quality programs and services, and looking to the future, we're talking about the community pool, that where we're sitting, it's just to the right over there. We're talking about opening up programming for inclusive populations that really has been kind of an afterthought, not only for our community here, mm -hmm. but for the entire region at large. And we look to really strengthen that. And then our fitness and wellness section as well. So those are the three key components that going to next year's fiscal budget, we're looking at addressing. Well, you, you, you stole my segue, but you mm -hmm. did such a darn good job at it. <laughs> um, but yeah, as, you, as we talk to the crossroads and moving forward, I know a lot of folks are excited about the push for the pool. Right. Well, we're there. Mm -hmm. But tell us where we are exactly at right now with that. Give us a kind of a status mm -hmm. update. You did mention it's going basically right across the parking lot. It is. Uh, but where are we at right now with that? So we worked with the procurement department and the request for proposal to secure our architect actually closes on February 23rd at three o'clock. After that point, we then will review the applications, do interviews and potentially select an architect. After that is completed, we'll be able to sit back, negotiate price points, finish the blueprints and the specs on the project and knock on wood if we can get ground broken September, August timeframe we are confident that we should have it up and operational by Memorial Day of 2024. Wow, that's impressive. Mm -hmm. I mean, you just said the RFP is slated to come back as of this filming. Yes, indeed. Tomorrow. That's correct. Wow, wow. Yeah. And then probably spend about a week to 10 days reviewing it. We have a panel. They're going to review each and every one of the proposals mm -hmm. to come up with their top three, top four submissions. And then at that point, we'll schedule interviews with them, do more one-on-one -on -one conversations to get to know them and their team. And above all, yeah, we're looking at price points, but also to make sure that that organization or that firm is a good fit yeah. for Culpepper, the Parks and Rec Department, to be able to deliver the product that uh, they want to see. Well, I tell you what, Parks and Rec is not one to rest on its laurels, that's for sure. <laughs> not at all. Uh, it's coming, in, it's coming in, in waves now. And I know the community is extremely excited. Um, we have just, just about a minute left. Mm -hmm. I just want to ask you a real quick question. What's, as we look towards the construction of the pool, which we will continue to update, mm -hmm. what's even further down the line? What, what, what are your goals upcoming? Well, I think we touched on that a little bit with focusing on those three options, which were the inclusive community and really expanding that program base. Mm -hmm. The second, again, is our fitness and wellness. And then the third, is really continuing to listen to the community. We're in a unique position that we've got folks that are coming through this facility each and every day and having the ability to be responsive to their needs. Again, Culpepper's not the community it was five, 10, 15 years ago as far as the growth and the population. Mm -hmm. And with that, there are different trends and interests that come on. And to be a proactive department it's understanding those needs and finding a way to deliver them. You make a really good point. And one specific example that's not, you know, all around us is pickleball. Yes. Um, with the surge in pickleball, we've talked about the outdoor courts, the indoor courts, the courts that are here that are lined for pickleball. Mm -hmm. That's just one small example. But when you're talking about listening to the needs of the community, I want to make sure that you can't listen unless somebody talks to you. 
Yeah, and, and that's 100% the truth, that we are the true meaning of what a civil servant is. You know, without them, we can plan, we can do programs, we can develop facilities, mm -hmm. but if they're not gonna want them or want to use them, we're basically spinning our tires. You know, it's funny you mentioned pickleball, but one of the ones that we're really seeing the most uses of is disc golf. You know, if you get an opportunity, ride up to Spillman, because uh, talk about another improvement project, we pulled all the tee boxes and they're now concrete. They look fantastic. Mm -hmm. They're great. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Have you been up there play yet? I've been to both courses mm -hmm. quite a few times. Nice, nice. Just a few times. Nice. It, is, it is amazingly fun. Um, so, I mean, obviously we want to tell folks that if they want to be, if they want to be a part of this, mm -hmm. they have to make sure that they're, you know, as you mentioned, providing the, you're providing the right opportunities. Right. I love, I love the story of just, you could be spinning your wheels. Mm -hmm. So you got to get traction from the community. Right. And so that's reaching out, 727-3412, mm -hmm. getting in touch with you on Facebook, mm -hmm. logging on to the website, Correct. coming by the facility and saying, hey, look, this, this is fantastic. Um, you know, could you do this? Yes. Can this happen? Yep. Um, and that's the reason why we're in this facility. Correct. That's the reason why the pool is going across the, across the way. Mm -hmm. It's because of your reputation and partnership with the community and all these organizations is what's making it happen. Yeah, and I would say too, if you've got a question about something, whether it's how we reserve fields, mm -hmm. why particular practices are in order, a program that you wanna see, we can't answer that question or provide clarity if we don't know that it's going on. And in today's social media driven world, sometimes the wrong information gets out there and mm -hmm. starts spreading like wildfire Whereas if someone had, again, contact us on Facebook, send us an email, give us a phone call, we could provide the sound logic and reasoning in why particular processes are in place. But again, we're here for the community. You know, we want to deliver services, deliver facilities, deliver programs that are beneficial to individuals and their families. So call us, email us, reach out to us on Facebook. And again, we'll see what we can do to make sure we're improving the quality of your life. Andrew, I couldn't have, could have said it any better, and that's why we have you on. <laughs> <laughs> that's why you're here talking to us, because you kind of get us going in the right direction. Well, we try. Um, again, I want to say thank you to you for coming and joining us today. Yes, thank sir. you for your leadership. Thank you for putting together such an amazing staff. Absolutely. Uh, I know that you, we talk about partnerships, the Board of Supervisors, the entire community. Mm -hmm. uh, everybody is working towards building a better Culpepper, mm -hmm. and this investment that we're in right now is paying dividends on a daily basis. Yeah, and if I can jump in and interject for one more moment. You certainly can. Behind us, the wall to the right. I, you're killing me, Smalls. Uh, am that I really, was, am I really was, stepping into the next intro? That was exactly what I was gonna ask you about. I mean, great minds think alike, right? I, you're not wrong. No, but just to jump to that, it is true. So we just finished the installation of our mural wall mm -hmm. behind me to the right, a really unique abstract piece. We've got to really spin Special thank yous to Jonathan with Express Design, as well as uh, Tony with K Art and Design as well. Both were instrumental in getting that piece and going to building a better community. We're looking for partners consistently, whether it's an individual, whether it's a business, whether it's an organization, that we've developed a community investment opportunities package that we're out there soliciting funds to continue all this outstanding programming that we're doing. Mm -hmm. And part of that is getting set on the wall back here, your name, your business, your logo, whatever the case may be. But we'd love for people to reach out and be a part of us helping build a better Culpeper County. You're absolutely correct. These partnerships, these local partnerships, correct. are really make the difference. They do. All right. Andrew, again, thank you for joining us. I very much appreciate taking the time. Thank you. I know you're a busy man and you got a lot of work to do, but I am going to ask you if Tabitha can take your seat back, if that's all right. She sits in here better than I do anyway, so yes. <laughs> again, thank you for your time. Thanks, thank you sir. for the great work you do. Appreciate it. Thank you, Andrew, and thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we still have a little bit more on this episode of The Recreation Rundown. Well, thankfully, ladies and gentlemen, we welcome back Miss Tabitha Riley. The brains behind the operation, <laughs> the most wonderful employee, a stellar addition to Culpeper. I was hoping he could hear me and that he might run out here and yell at us. He's probably pacing somewhere on the phone again because <laughs> he gets constant phone calls. So yeah. 
Well, Tabitha, welcome back. Um, <laughs> again, uh, we've 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 talked about it throughout the program. I mean, really, this is just an amazing opportunity mm -hmm. and investment in the Culpeper community. And we've heard it time and time again with our discussion earlier mm -hmm. with Andrews here. Uh, but again. As we talked about every single time we've sat in front of the cameras for Recreation Rundown, it's about the partnerships. Oh, absolutely. Board of Supervisors, Tony, Express, mm -hmm. Board of Supervisors, the community in general. Mm -hmm. uh, really, it takes all of us to make this work. Absolutely. And it seems like this is working very well. We've got a good, um, a good mix. I guess it's, I feel like you want to say something else. I was, I was thinking of the. Um, movie with um jim carrey how the cookie crumbles oh uh <laughs> i was that's, trying to come up um, yeah that evan one. All, not evan almighty the other one the previous the one. first one the good one yeah what's the what's the name of that one? Oh, bruce, bruce all right bruce, bruce almighty, almighty. Yeah. Bruce almighty yeah bruce almighty yes that's the way the, okay i see where you're going with uh, that. i was trying to come up with something catchy but i'm not that quick so. hey it's okay it took me forever to forget the name of that movie i had to turn it into cold for that one Jeez, louise no but really uh it really is a culmination of these partnerships mm -hmm. that is making this work so absolutely well. absolutely so one of the things we love to do mm -hmm. on the recreation rundown is run down some of the uh the the new offerings mm -hmm. the big offerings that are coming down the pipe if you could please share with us some of it because i've i've heard a little birdie or i'm sorry a little chicky say that you have an <laughs> easter event coming up correct so um three big special events mm -hmm. first one is our moonlight extravagant candy hunt mm -hmm. which is going to be our spring easter event friday march 31st um 6 to 7 30. Um, it's a free event um, we currently have about 400 kids registered already um, we do ask people to pre-register so the Easter Bunny knows how much candy to leave. Very important thing. It is. Um, but we're going to have a bunch of crafts and activities. We're still looking for community vendors to come out mm -hmm. um, to set up activities for the kids, to have booths to sell. Um, so that's Friday, March 31st, our Wicked Bottom Cross Country 5K and Half Mile Fun Run. That's going to be a big t-shirt. We, we make it really small fun. Okay, okay. All right. <laughs> but um, that is Saturday, May 6th. Mm -hmm. um, half mile starts at 8 a.m., 5K starts at 8.30. That is also the Girls on the Run end of season celebratory 5K. So we partner with them on that, another partnership. Um, so registration is going on for that now. To make sure you get your event shirt, you want to register by the beginning of April. Mm -hmm. um, and then our third big event is going to be the Culpeper Cycling Century and Tour, which is, is going to be our 16th annual. Oh, my goodness. So plans, There's a lot going on. And that's just our big events. Then our regular classes, we, we're currently in our winter season of activities. Mm -hmm. So we still have a salsa class coming up. Um, we've got indigo tie-dye. Dancing or chips? Dancing. Okay. Dancing. We haven't got to the cooking classes yet. <laughs> So salsa dance classes, uh, we got an indigo tie-dye class, rubber stamping, scrapbooking type class, outdoor learning lab um, with the uh, Friends of the Rappahannock, um, some new programs, we've got Fit and Well for Seniors, mm -hmm. it's a seated fitness class which is really fun, um, the instructor's, uh, he's just really engaging, very high energy, he's a blast to listen to. Um, Okinawan Karate for ages 12 and up. And then our spring schedule is getting ready to come out on March 10th. And that's going to have, we ran out of room in our newsletter. Mm -hmm. So we've got a couples massage class, um, very normal paranormal. That's definitely going to be an interesting, fun one. Gentle yoga, a music workout for kids during spring break week. That's going to be thanks to a grant we're getting. Um, pound class, which is a fitness class using drumsticks and the either five-gallon buckets or stability balls. Mm -hmm. So it's literally pound. It's a great cardio exercise. Um, Mama and Me charcuterie cooking class. Charcuterie? Yes. Okay. Emphasis on the cute. Um, they'll take it's with um, Quartz Kitchen. Uh, Courtney Simpson and uh, brunch board with mom and kids age six and up. And that's just 
touching the surface of the classes. Yeah, and um, as you mentioned, you ran out of you ran out, ran out of room in the newsletter. Yeah. Plus, uh, spring is going to have some of our summer camps already scheduled, so parents that are looking for summer activities are already going to be in there, so they can start planning that. The one I'm looking forward to the most summer camp is our kids camp with Mahogany Ridge Dogs Dog Training Center. It's, it's right up your alley. You get to bring your dog to camp. What? You get to bring your dog to camp. I think How Nicole is fun signing is up that? today. That's kind of neat. So, but it's a Monday through Friday. You bring all your equipment for your dog. The dogs do have to be crate trained. Um, but kids and dogs come and nine to three, spend a day at camp. How awesome is that? So, and that one, it's a little on the pricey side, but we did, again, our access assistance program. We're also doing payment plans for that one. Okay. So, um, but tons of activities. March 10th is spring registration. Mark your calendars. Winter registration is still going on right now. Um, follow us on Facebook. Follow our website. When the newsletter comes out on March 10th, it's great. But go online and see the full listing because there's some stuff that didn't make newsletter. I, and again, this is exactly what I was going to say. There's. The, as we run down these offerings, they are <laughs> numerous, mm -hmm. but there's always so much more. There's always so much more. And then also um, we're doing an open paint or open art class for parent and child here at the field house. Um, Tuesdays from 9 to 10, you do have to pre-register, but we provide all the supplies. That's a win. You, there's no instructor, so we're putting out a bunch of supplies. Show up with your kid, have an hour to make art, and leave. And guess what? We clean up. Oh, that's even better. You want to come finger paint? Come finger paint on our table. <laughs> Take and play with charcoals and pencils and stuff like that, all in us, and we'll clean up the mess, and y'all get to go home. You know just what to say. Let me, let me ask you a quick question. Um, these, these offerings that you have mm -hmm. uh, with Parks and Rec, can you tell me where the majority of those will be held? In our new building. <laughs> oh, okay. Can you also tell me where your office is? In our new building. Wait, what? Right here in the Culpeper <laughs> County Fieldhouse. It's a one-stop shop. You need to talk to staff about a facility rental. Looking, And the Fieldhouse has activity or classrooms available for rent. Looking for a place to have your club meeting, a birthday party, a baby shower. You can do rentals here. And oh the pr goodness. it's four hours for one classroom is a hundred dollars. Okay. So that includes your setup. That's twenty five an hour. Twenty five an hour. Math. We can do that math real really quickly, <laughs> and that includes your setup, your event, and your cleanup. You need additional hours. I don't know that number off the top of my head, mm -hmm. but you can do one classroom, which is twenty five people, two up to fifty, three up to seventy five people. So, yeah, we're a one stop shop. So as we, uh, again, we want to make sure that there is so much that Parks and Rec offers to our Culpeper, Culpeper community. But then again, um, you know, we can't talk about it all here right. because we're limited on time. Reach out, find you on Facebook, the information on the screen. Give us a call, 727-3412. Mm -hmm. Log on to the website or swing by and say hello. Stop by, have a tour of the facility. Right. We love giving people tours. Um, you don't want to call us, don't want to email us, message us on Facebook. Okay. So it's there's plenty of ways to get in touch with us if you want to, and we've got tons of information to share. And there's plenty of reasons to do just oh, that. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> and if you don't see an activity you want to take, let us know. And if you would like to teach an activity, let us know, because we really want to talk to those people. You know, somebody told me that you were looking for fitness instructors. Oh, absolutely. Okay. We need fitness. We are trying to up what we have in our aerobic studio. So Zumba, Pilates, yoga, uh, boot camp classes, um, bar classes. All. Mm -hmm. If you are a fitness instructor, please reach out to us. I'm glad you weren't looking at me when you said that because <laughs> I appreciate you. I really do. Again, Tabitha, I want to thank you for taking the time. I know you and your staff are over the moon. Absolutely. About how this, how this Tickle building... pink and purple polka dots. Pink. There we go. <laughs> I, I knew that. I knew I was going to get that. But I, I, I really, um, the work you and the entire staff and Andrew have done has just been remarkable. I know you guys will pass it off to the partnerships that you've created, the numerous partnerships mm -hmm. that you've created. And while that is true, it takes a core staff such as yourself, yeah. April, Holly, 
Absolutely. We've got an amazing staff. I'd put yeah. us up against any other department in the area. Yeah. So everybody's everybody is willing to jump in and do anything and everything from cleaning the floor and scrubbing toilets, which we've all had to do, Man. to planning activities and events, helping customers. It's just it's all part of the job. Well, you know, I would invite I would invite those watching to come by and say hi. Please. Uh, those hours again, four hour field house. Monday through Saturday. 8 a.m. to 9 p.m., Sunday, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. All right. Again, Tabitha, thank you so much. Oh, thank you. We really appreciate you. I appreciate you. And again, thank you for tuning in. We hope you enjoyed today's episode of the Recreation Rundown. Again, use the information on your screen today. Uh, or better yet, come in and challenge one of us to basketball. She'll probably win. No. She, yeah. No, yeah. I can't play basketball. <laughs> <laughs> but again, folks, thank you for tuning in. We hope you enjoy today's recreation rundown. And again, take advantage of the opportunity that Culpeper County Parks and Recreation is presenting to all of us here. So come by and see us. Use the information on your screen and take part in what we're doing here. Until we see you again yeah, on the courts, quilting, or maybe soon in our new pool, you have yourselves a great day and a better tomorrow.